The study of the way meanings of words have changed throughout history, the origin of words, and how words change spelling from language to language to become part of new languages and everything that goes with it, or the history of language and the history of words is called etymology. The use of the word debanking in books, newspapers, scientific works, uh, medical, uh, legal works, that sort of thing, peaked in 1997 at point zero 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 six percent of words used to make any kind of publication. That's one in 16 million. This is out of the one million possible or probable pronounceable letter combinations and of words, and including some misspellings and words spellable that have been used on estimates as the maximum number of words in the English language considering every single country that speaks a variation of English. Out of that, one million possible letter combinations and words of whatever. That includes words that just include the word ing on the end, that sort of thing. We have around 47,000 obsolete words and about 170,000 words in use currently. The obsolete words are only listed as far as them being common usage that have fallen out of usage. <clears throat> the word debanking doesn't merit a blip in the group and is almost impossible to find in any new, recent, or old dictionary so far. I'm sure it is out there. And while the word debanking has an obvious inference you can get from it, finding an original definition of it before it was brought to prominence by a politician in 2023 is virtually impossible. In fact, the word is only seen in any works I can find online other than dictionaries that did this because of the political incident we're going to talk about for usage in court papers being listed on decisions against someone who brought in the word and refused to use a definition that would work. It's not a legal term. It's not a term commonly in usage. It's not something that a historian would look up easily. It's an unusual or borderline unprovable to exist word. I mean, I'm sure it did, but anyway, here's the origin story for it. Usage, again, is 1 in 16 million, period, full stop. However, it was used in the United Kingdom sometime before 2015, excuse me, 1915. That's, this is my fourth take. I'm just going to continue. In the United Kingdom before 1915, oh, that hurts, to 1927, the word was in usage. Now, it's not specifying that it was in usage in anything other than some novel, some book. Somebody might have been doing it as a creative licensing thing uh, or in newspapers. So journalism and bad journalism could be mixed in there. Books would also include not just books on real subjects, but fantasy novels for all you know. But anyway, United Kingdom. Then the United States had it show up in 1923 through 1941, and then it died down to so low it's not worth mentioning. You can look at a graph of its usage by people analyzing word usage, unique spellings, and misspellings throughout history, and this was done even before computers. People would go through and read each incident of a word. Yeah. Word nerds. Let's move on. Um, it was also in use from 1981 to 1988, according to some graph showing it. Again, it could be any kind of work. It could have been a novel. It could have been somebody seeing the word once and reproducing it. Uh, 1940 through 1980, that's a long distance. Then we get 1993 through 2007. Mostly by 2004, the word being used in any way was most noted for people not knowing the definition of it and throwing it around. But anyway, it peaked in 1997. Okay? All right. Uh, some blogs mentioned it for specific reasons. 
We'll get to that in a minute. I couldn't find financial proceedings or anything else associated with banking or the legal system concerning banking mentioning this expression, debanking. And no, and yes, I looked this up, terms used by banks internally, terms used by banks as pseudo terms for things. The use of this in the United States is almost unheard of before a certain incident. June 30th, 2023, Nigel Farage claimed that a bank that he'd been doing business with for 40 years that usually requires you to be a millionaire or a billionaire denied him business bank services as a business account only. They, they said it's okay for you to have a personal account. We just don't want you to have a business bank account. And he decided it was a political exposed person incident. He was politically exposed. Now you can look that up, and yes, that seems like a reasonably clear statement, like, but not as clear as debanking. By July, the bank had actually said the reason for this was actually that he was causing them significant reputation risk, and they cited things like his alleged Russia connections, etc., Now, repeat, a guy for 40 years or more who had had a bank account, a really snooty bank, and a snooty bank type, in a bank, a set of banks that are notorious for not letting you just have a bank account because you have an ID, okay? Who didn't want to do business with him. But the other reason would be if he was broke. Yes, the BBC reported something said by a person who worked there who was a major individual who got fired for saying that he was broke. He wasn't. That's absolutely, seriously, that was a stupid thing to do. But anyway, let's move on. UK papers then decided to dig up debanking for the same reason that creative writing class tells you to go look up old dictionaries. Debanking was used as a dog whistle for persecuting him. You know, poor rich boy. If a rich person asks you for donations, they're either not rich or they're lying about what they need the donations for. If a rich person tries to get your sympathy by saying they may be coming for your whatever they lost, what he lost is the right to have a business bank account at that business, at that bank. <clears throat> By Halloween 2023, gotta wonder, Collins English Dictionary for British English made a new entry for the act of depriving a person of banking facilities. Debanking. This was a new entry for them. They were acting as if the word was coined by the press. And in a way it was. The word was an obsolete word wasn't used anymore, and it was preferred to say something about it by just using the definition. The original meaning for debanking was, we're closing your account, nothing else. You're being cashed out of the bank. There are many expressions for it, but debanking, I'm sure it'll become popular because it makes more sense. Now, where, what about the blogs that use it? All right, I want to point out something here. Something you can really quickly say that gives a person an idea of what you're saying, you know, communicating, but is being misused as a dog whistle for, I'm being persecuted because of my beliefs, or rally behind the rich guy, all you poor people, because I'm going to get behind you while you take the flack. Farage was king of the world for a while and then fell. He was uh, famous and boisterous and had an interesting worldview. There's a whole bunch of papers on that. And, uh, yeah, uh, dailies in UK aren't really an expert source of language. True journalism, they are not always, okay? Uh, dictionary is not carrying this word for, I'm going to say, really, dictionary is not carrying this word 
for it looks like a hundred years means it's not really commonly used. Now, again, I'm going to say it. When people use a word that hasn't been used in a long time, like let's say they decide to just speak Latin for some reason, they're either doing it for some effect on you, or they don't have a better word for it. There's some words that are really unusual, rarely used, but they're the right word for it. Okay? Uh, Keno, I forgot, Keno something something. The word we use for liminal spaces on the internet, that word is a word that literally means exactly what you're looking for. I don't have a word for it. I can't think, how, how would I describe it? Well, there's a word you create for it. This is not one of those. Your, your bank account has been closed. Or we're refusing to have you allow, allow you to have a bank account at our bank. Debanking is an action taken. Now, I want to point out another short-form word that was used as a way to sugarcoat something. A long time ago, because the economy was getting damaged, people decided not to call it what they thought of calling it before. So they decided to come up with a word that didn't sound so bad, and maybe people would have a positive outlook. And that word they decided to use for the economic crisis at the time was the depression. <clears throat> so let's get on with it. What is the effect of this word? By synopsizing the word debanking instead of saying we have the right to review your service, we're closing your bank account, you are free to do business elsewhere. By the way, that was a business account. You're welcome to have a personal account. That's not the same as I'm being persecuted and nailed to a cross because of my belief system. Those are not the same meanings. Okay? So, yeah, the the subtext here is absolutely what I'm saying. Also, uh, Farage was accused of lying about this initially because he's notorious for fluffing his subject matter. Anyway, at a New Hampshire rally on the 24th, uh, Trump said the following. This is a rough quotation. I'm not going to bother worrying about it. Let's go on. We're going to place strong protections to stop banks and regulators from trying to do something to you. They want to do something to you. We're going to debank. He made it a bumper sticker. They want to debank you. We're going to debank. As a, a little, you know, joke. Maybe somebody wrote it. Um, but they're trying to debank you. Okay. What group of people actually get... Now, the term that's actually used is de-risking. They don't use debanking. That's, that's, debanking sounds like a joke. And in a professional environment, de-risking is something they say internally. And what that means is... I mean, it appeared in 1987 as a pseudonym for we're closing your account and running you away. It's in, it was in dictionaries by 2012... To make something safer by reducing the possibility that something bad will happen. De-risking. Totally obvious meaning. And also, most of the time, current usage at the time, money being lost and reducing financial risk. And then by extension, using that word to explain to someone, we're de-risking, therefore you can't have an account here. That just became a pseudonym for it. Debanking sounds like a better word for it, but it invites a joke I, I could do a joke about. So... What, what is this actually used for? I couldn't find this being used in common usage in legal words, in legal works, excuse me, or in the press. I'm sure there are entries for it somewhere someone can find, but I can't find any that show that it was common usage. Is this a commonly used word? It's an obsolete expression. It's not even a word. It's an expression. Next, what is this applied to mostly? People who are guilty of money laundering get debanked or de-risked. That, that's it. D Donald Trump is currently under investigation for something that would cause him to lose access to his bank account. So it's on his mind. But he's telling a bunch of poor people in an audience, they're coming for your money. It, it's a rich guy wanting sympathy and telling everybody who's poor to back him up so he doesn't lose anything. Uh, obviously, he's not that rich. He's really worried about losing a shit ton of money recently. That's what it is. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. But yeah, it's a word.